Hey guys, it's Kyle with Lone Peak. Today we're gonna to talk about the interior of the Lone Peak camper. Let me show it to you. All right, in our past videos, we have shown you a lot about the outside of the camper and the features, but a lot of you guys are emailing in asking about like, what does it actually look like on the inside? Like, more detailed views. How do the tent doors work? How does the bug mesh work? How does the bed work? So I wanna give you a little bit of a rundown on each of those things. And then also I'll, I'll chat through some of the changes that we're making from what you see here to the production version that's coming in the next couple months. So first, I'm just gonna move the bed platform out of the way. This is one of the coolest features on the camper because I literally have the whole bed of my truck to stand up in. Uh, some of you tall guys have been asking me, how tall is the camper? I'm 6'3", and my hand is literally a foot from the ceiling. So it's almost 10 feet tall inside of here. Um, and that's accomplished by the length of the camper. Um, and then also, because that gives us a higher um, apex on it. And then the rear overhang gives us a ton of space inside of here compared to a normal wedge camper. So let's talk about the tent doors. Um, the material here, the actual material is a waterproof polyester uh, with a PU coating on the backside. Something I didn't talk about in a prior video is that we are changing uh, the inside to uh, be a blackout material. Um, so basically light won't be able to enter into the tent and won't be able to enter through the roof either. So it'll be completely opaque so you can sleep in longer, which is pretty awesome. We are offering two different tent colors. We'll have the original tan color and we'll have uh, a new dark gray color. Um, so when we confirm your order, you'll be able to choose that. This is how, see, this is one of the changes I'm making is uh, in this spot here, we now have a condensation vent because again, I'm 6'3 and I can barely open up the actual tent material. Um, so that'll be, I mean, it still might be a reach for some of you guys, but it'll be a heck of a lot easier. So one of the, the things we, we chose to do while designing the tent is that I hate when there's bug mesh on the inside because I rarely ever undo the bug mesh. Uh, most of the times I'm just taking the actual waterproof material down when it's not raining. And so instead of having to undo both of those, because normally you'd have to undo the bug mesh first and then the outer material, we put the bug mesh on the outside so that you only have to do one thing and you can get set up faster. So we have these little, little grommets that hold that tent material in place. Now, if you actually do want to undo the bug mesh, you can roll it up. Same deal as before. Use the same little little grommet and you're good to go. So that is on all three doors. So the door that Clayton is looking through right now, you have both the bug mesh and you have the waterproof material. Same thing with this side here. All right, let's talk about some other changes that we're making to the interior features. Um, gear vault table is an option. If you add the gear vault, there's a cool little drop down wooden table. Um, the way that we're gonna retain this and hold this up in the future is with a uh, heavy duty seat belt material Velcro strap that will wrap around and secure it. Uh, during a, a bunch of our trips and using this, we had a little wing nut that held this on here and I have lost the wing nut, it is gone. Um, so we're changing that. We're also changing instead of these, um, uh, these, what do you call these, webbing cables, webbing straps, we're moving to a steel cable that will mount, uh, be much more secure on there. Um, if we look backwards into the interior, one of the cool features about this bed platform is that it mounts to the channel inside of the extrude. And so what that means is that you can actually undo the gas strut and then loosen up the, the hinge in the rear and you can slide this more towards the tailgate of your truck. So right now it's set up, um, I can sleep in this comfortably and I still have about 30, 32 inches of pass-through space. But if you're super tall, you can actually move the mattress further out and that basically gives you more room for your feet where the wedge is. That's kind of the limiting factor because the mattress is 80 inches long. It's, it's long enough for most of us. Um, 
One uh, feature that we're considering and working on developing right now is essentially a, a sleeping platform extension that would go right here. Um, and we're trying to think if that's gonna be one piece that fits in or it might be two separate pieces. And ideally that's for like a dog sleeping up here or a kid just to make room, um, make some extra space if you need more sleeping space. So in the last video, I talked a little bit about the dust killer vent that is gonna be mounted right here. Um, this bulkhead actually extends up. Um, in the final version, this will be lower because that allows our gas struts to be able to slide anywhere in this channel, depending on how much over, overhang you have, which is dependent on um, your bed length. And so the uh, dust killer vent will go here and basically force air underneath your mattress directly into the bed of your truck. All right, another thing that you guys commented on uh, that wasn't perfect on the prototype is basically this part up here. It's kind of sagging and this could collect water and snow, uh, which is definitely not what we want. So to fix that, we are we're changing the tent a little bit to make it more taut. And then we're also changing the angle so it'll be much steeper. Um, this rear overhang feature honestly was a bit of an afterthought. You know, we had most of the design done and I saw it on, I believe it's a Roof Nest Falcon Pro. Roof Nest guys, you're brilliant. It's a great feature to increase the interior volume. Um, and so we, the support system for this was made out of a aluminum bar I had in my garage and some extra bamboo I had laying around because I thought it looked cool. Um, this is all changing to a metal structure. It's all gonna be um, extruded aluminum. And the way that it mounts, so this is another thing that I, I lost um, is you have this little pull pin, this latch pin that I'm surprised I haven't lost. These are still the originals, um, but they basically just snap into the end and they keep that taut. Uh, the final system basically uses a spring plunger so you can't lose it and it automatically snaps into place. And the angle and there's basically a, an ability to fine tune the adjustments. So you can basically have the correct amount of tension on the tent that you want. Um, in order to keep this real strong. All right, one last thing. I talked about this probably way back in January on an update video. Um, I thought it would be cool to mount the tent to the inside of these extrusions. And then any rain that came down the side goes into this little rain gutter and it actually gets um, carried out to either end of the camper. We did this with, uh, we tested this with some heavy rain simulation, meaning a hose, and it uh, filled up the channel very quickly. And who knows if that's actually gonna, gonna happen, but we don't want water to get on the inside of this ever. So uh, we are now mounting the tent to the outside of the frame so that it just naturally falls off. Honestly, I think that's about it. I'm trying to share with you guys all the different changes that we're making to the interior and Maybe the only other thing is that the roof supports will now have a T-slot track built into them. And so that will help us mount uh, insulation panels. Um, we, we're also on the tent to help it uh, fold up and not pinch. We're gonna have a bungee system, kind of like the Super Pacific. We have a bungee that pulls in the tent material. Um, I think that's about it. Anyway. I uh, hope this was helpful again, guys. Uh, keep asking your questions. because All of your questions basically dictate what content we make. Um, we want to give you guys an accurate picture of, of, of what you're buying. So it's Friday for me. I'm going to go get some lunch and finish, some, finish up some work. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.